All right, we're now joined by Jerry Dixon. Congratulations on the new album. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Checking mic number, we're also sound checking here, so. <laughs> Louder, harder, faster. How'd you come up with that name? That was an old name that Robert had lying around. <laughs> and uh, I guess he was like, you know what, I gotta make a song out of that. We're like, yeah, that would be cool, you know? And uh, he finally wrote the song and we were like, Hey, that's that's a cool title for the record, you know. Yeah, man. makes a so, statement. Yeah, yeah. And how about that cover art? Uh, the artwork, yeah, that's kind of a, I guess they call it pop art. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> got a little, little 70s influence. With yeah, the, uh, yeah. The hot rods and. Uh, yeah, we had the guy Stefan Jensen who did. He's he owns Warren Star Clothing. Okay. So they do all of our clothing, and oh, okay. we're like, you know what? He's uh, <laughs> he knows what he's doing. You know, he's got a cool eye for. For uh, what's hip, you know, yeah. we're we're a little more old school. Got that classic. We look. were like just gonna stamp our name yeah. on it or something stupid, you know. Like, nah, we better hire a professional. <laughs> and then and then blurring the girl's eyes out always adds to the intrigue. Like, yeah, that. that I don't know where that came from. Even our eyes, I'm like, ah, yeah, fuck, it looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. Man. He must not like eyes. Great stuff. Well, I know we're in your old stomping grounds out here. And, you know, Van Halen played right across the street back in the old high school days at the Civic Auditorium. I know, Hallowed, I know. Grounds. Yeah, we're on the, I can feel it, you know? Yeah, Michael Anthony's bass. Yes. Running with the devil is going to erupt any second here. Yeah, I actually grew up like five minutes from here right? in La Crescenta, yeah. It's, oh that's God. the next town right over. Course. Yeah, yeah. Right I grew, above Burbank. Yeah, that's where I grew up. So this is my, uh, I'm really home. <laughs> I know you were still in like 11th grade when, yeah. when you joined with Eric. Tell us about how you hooked up with Eric. Uh, well, we, I did a show with uh, a band called Risk mm -hmm. at the Troubadour. And they, I was 16, I just got my Volkswagen bug and was able to drive. And mm -hmm. so we uh, played with Eric's band who was a lot younger than, than I was, or than my, my guys were like 23, 24, okay. and I, I always thought, God, these guys look, they're so old, <laughs> you know? And uh, this chick said, hey, you look like Matt Dillon, you know? And I'm like, I am Matt Dillon, whatever. <laughs> She's like, oh, you gotta stay and watch my friend Eric's band, and they came out, and, uh, and they were great. They were like my age, I'm like, this mm -hmm. is cool. So uh, I hung out and met Eric, and we just hit it off, and, uh, the baby was born, you know? Wow. Yeah. Now, now, the name Warren, how'd that come about? Was that a, a long list of names or come pretty quick? No, it was named somewhat after Warren D. Martini, believe it or not. Yeah. Warren, Warren, yeah. And we're, Warren knows about big, it? We're big rat fans. I think he does. I don't know. <laughs> well, I know you had Bo Hill do all the, the, the classics. The, you know, I mean, talk about that evolution from going from you know, playing around town, I know, you know, it's always hard to get that record deal. You know, you guys were in a, in a, in a fight, flyer in the, pal you know, the Palladium and all the, you yeah. know, forum shows and all that. Talk about, you know, making those moves where, you well, know, Columbia it was, weird. it was weird because we were almost a 90s band, believe it or not. I mean, our record didn't come out till I think, 89 was our first record. So all those bands were gone. I mean, we watched pretty much everybody get signed but us. Yeah. And we were, <laughs> there was like a span of like two or three years where we were the only ones left going, God, come on, you know, <laughs> don't leave us, don't leave us. And uh, it was kind of an accident that we did this demo tape for Prince's record yeah, label. Yeah, for Paisley Park. Right, for Paisley Park. And then he, he liked it, but he was like, eh, it's not really my thing. And didn't know what to do with yeah, it. Yeah, so we had a semi, you know, professional tape, and he was cool and said, you know, they could do whatever they want with it. What I, studio did you cut that one at? Uh, we did it with Ed Cherney, who yeah. does, uh, you know, he still produces yeah. and does a lot of stuff. We Somewhere down in Santa Monica, okay. I want to say. And Fourth Street or one of those? Yeah, right by that Genghis Cohen yeah, restaurant. Yeah, There's yeah. a studio across there. Right. And... Uh, so that that was you know a weird kind of break that we got yeah you know it was Somebody kind of through him the but then we had a good representation of what we were right. and we took that and uh finally got our our deal with it yeah yeah now obviously you know heaven was the big song on the album you know you guys had four 
four yeah, singles, yeah. you know, Down Boys, obviously the, the theme song of you guys, and you all got the tattoos. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, but talk about, you know, when Jeannie joined the band and, you know, his songwriting and all that, how it all kind of gelled where, you know, your attitudes and the songs and everything really came together for, you know, dirty, rotten, filthy, stinking rich. Yeah, you know, it wasn't like a big light bulb went off when he got in the band it really wasn't he just him and steve you know we were looking for a singer and a drummer so mm -hmm. we were more mainly concerned that you know he was a good front man and uh, yeah. you know and he kind of you know grew into the songwriting thing i i believe you know he just mm -hmm. would write something and we'd be like oh that's cool let's take our song out and then he would write heaven and we'd be like that's cool let's take this song out and you know he just evolved you know, back then, we you didn't really think about it, you know? Yeah. It was like, you know, oh, they're cool, they're good. You know, you've never heard it produced or what the big picture would be, you know? Sure. And, uh, yeah, we just got lucky, you know? That was his contribution, you know? Yeah. And, well, I know your life changed, obviously, with MTV, and, you know, Down Boys got on there, and then Heaven became the number one song on MTV. Talk about the first time, like, you saw yourself on MTV and what that meant. You was know, that was that more exciting than hearing yourself on the radio? I think yeah, I was, you know, the T V stuff was yeah. M T V and the videos was you know, that was super cool to I guess, you know, I think I speak for all of us, we were more like relieved that <laughs> we finally got in the door and, and we You're on the field. Yeah, because you you know, you just don't really know when you start out. You yeah. like you feel it in your bones like every other musician. But, you know, you think you're a little bit special. You think you have what it's so once that's all validated, it, it's, yeah. it was a huge like, all oh, right. OK, you granted we're, we're, part of the club. Supposed, we're supposed to, Yeah, we're where we're supposed to be. This is cool. Um, but, you know, back then there were, you know, honestly, we really didn't see a lot of things that we did because there was no satellite televisions. Mm -hmm. There was no cell phones. There was, you know, so you, you know, you. You could rarely, you know, on the bus see MTV or anything. Yeah. So it was like you're in this bubble, you know, with management updates. Hey, you're, you know, number two in Billboard. Hey, you're number one here. You're doing great. All these stations picked up the song. So it was like, cool, 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 cool. I mean, what we could tell is the crowds got bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. You know, the magnitude of it, you really. The in stores got bigger. Just everything. everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, more people showing up. And exactly, exactly. At the bus. Yeah. And I know Tom Hewlett was a big part of the, the early days. Yeah. And what did you learn from Tom? What were the greatest lessons? Tom was just a cool, you know, old school, worked with Zeppelin, Elvis. You know, he didn't get rattled too much. Mm -hmm. So veteran. total veteran, you know. He just said, hang on for the ride of your life, you know. <laughs> just shit like that, you Been know. Been there, done that. Yeah, yeah. So he was like a proud, you know. He's like a proud daddy. Yeah. Man. And, it, you know, he, he was just as excited as we were because he had worked with, you know, all the, the bands that eventually got old. So this, yeah. you know, when he had us, he was like, oh, I got some new, you the know, next, I got the, the next, next train, young league. guys, you know, the newest thing. So he was stoked, you know, yeah. in his career. Well, I was lucky enough to be at the record release party for Cherry Pie. You guys did it at the Glam Slam, the old Prince Club down on Boylston. I don't know if you remember that oh, night. Oh, I do. Yeah, Top, down, all the guys came out. Downtown. Downtown, yeah, man, yeah. Cherry Pie. So I, I saw the launch of that, and obviously the, the video hit MTV, and, you know, it took you guys out of that sophomore slump that, you know, there was probably a little talk, a little pressure, like, you know, okay, the first album did well. How are they going to raise the bar? You know, talk about the evolution of the band at that point. Like, it really started gelling the songs, the production. You know, because obviously working with Bo Hill the first time, now you're yeah. used to working with him. And Yeah, we really, you know, it just, it, it didn't feel like, like I said, I don't think we realized the magnitude of anything. Because we were really, we were on the road like 18 months. Yeah. And didn't, you know, it didn't really soak in, I guess. And we came home and... I mean, we did pre-production in Hawaii with, you know, we, Bo, Bo was trying to get us in the studio. We were out surfing and riding, but, you know, it was, we hardly worked, you know, yeah. we were like, we weren't really pressured. It was like, he was like, you need to get down here and get to work and go over this. And we're like, we'll be fine. Don't worry about it, you know? Yeah. So it was a pretty laid back, you know, we still had the same team. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was just, to me, it was like an extension of, 
It's a natural evolution. Dirty rod and just, yeah, it was, you know, I think the playing got a little better, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, production was better. And, mm -hmm. now you, I know you guys toured with just tons of bands around that time, you know, Poison and Motley Crue and mm -hmm. Cinderella, Queensryche, Paul Stanley, David Lee Roth. What was, like, your favorite tours? Which ones really I think out? the biggest tour that we did was the Motley okay. tour. You know, that was, like, first time, you know, where it was like, it wow. Dr. Feelgood? Yeah, Dr. Feelgood. I mean, they were just on fire. Yeah. That was like their, they that were, was like their, sober. that was like their cherry pie. You know, that was <laughs> just blew them right yeah. up. And, uh, yeah, and they had Sold full production. Yeah, you know, the pyro. And I was like, damn, man, this is, <laughs> this is a rock show, you know? Yeah, man. You learn anything from any of those guys? Any, anybody instill any wisdom on you? Uh, no, not really. That I, I wish I had a good answer for that, but yeah. no. Okay. You know, when you're on tour with people, you, do, yeah. you really don't see, you don't hang out as much as you think you would. You right. know, you got your different sound check times and mm -hmm. show times, so we're, you know, we're leaving and they're getting there. A lot and, of moving parts. Yeah, yeah, so you very, you know. you Not a lot of hangout time. They're really, yeah, or just yeah. different schedules of the day, you know. By the time you're done, they're ready to go on. So. Yeah, yeah, and then, you know, we watch them and then they get done and we're gone. You know? Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I know there was a little bit of friction on, on the Poison Tour. I understand they gave you, what, about, about a foot on the stage or what was the Yeah, you know what, it was mainly just a stupid situation where we had done the whole tour and then kind of towards the end of it all of a sudden some weird happened backstage or with Brett's mother like had to be moved and they you know our security guys because something pyro was going on I don't know and he got offensive about it and you know, it was an accident. It really wasn't us. We're mm -hmm. like, oh, we don't know what the hell what happened out there. If one of our guys did something, we apologize. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just like, don't go on the risers anymore. And, you know, of course, Janie was like, oh, these ones over here? Don't go up here, you know. He's one of those guys, like, if you, the more you told them not to do something. Right. Like, he always said, you should have told me go up there as much as he wants. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh. Don't draw a line yeah, in the and sand. Then, and then their guys put plywood up, and then we moved the plywood. And so it just got, you know, just childish, stupid yeah. shit. Nothing, I think, you know, the media blew it out a little more. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, too, we were, we were looking for a reason to go home. Yeah. We were thrashed, you know. Between Cherry Pie and Dirty Rotten, I mean, really, it weren't, we never really got to go home. Yeah. And soak anything in or had time off. And Savor it. Yeah, and we were just, you know, I the think machine. subconsciously it was like, well, it's time to stick a fork in this bitch and yeah, yeah. <laughs> go go home and get right, you know? Well, obviously the evolution has come full circle. You got Robert Mason in the band. Like I say, the new band, the new album is stronger than ever. A lot of people saying it's one of their favorite Warrant albums, if not their favorite already has been out a week. Yeah. You know, talk, talk about what Robert means to the band and how everything, you know, is gelled back to, you know, the original band with a great singer. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's just one of those things that, yeah, I guess I was like more excited about Rockaholic. Like mm -hmm. I was like, all oh, right, this is great. I mean, and, and people like the record, you know, yeah. but maybe it just takes time. So this record, I just I tried not to get too vested in it mm -hmm. and get too emotional like I did last time. Yeah. And of course, now everyone loves it and it's great and Robert's great. And I'm like, well, what about the last one, motherfuckers? You know, which is what I'm happy about, you know, yeah. so I'm kind of taken back by it a little bit. Um, yeah, well, hopefully. Because I just, yeah, we just kind of let it happen naturally, you know, okay. with Robert. And, you know, Robert really... The best thing about him, besides his vocals, he's yeah. just he's brought a lot of stability to all of us. I mean, we've mentally just been tortured. You know, we've been left, we've been robbed, we've been dealing with death, and we should yeah. die because that guy's not with you know. Just a lot of hurtful, painful things, and all we're trying to do is just be in a rock band and put a show. Sure. On, you know, so when we got him, it's just. It's been nice to be, you know, solid, stable. There's no more of those problems. 
Yeah. You know, well, you'd like be like a day like this, and you'd be like, I don't know if we're playing tonight, dude. You'd be <laughs> yeah. like, why? Well, so show up, somebody went out last sing? night. Yeah, and somebody's sick again. So it's like every, you know, years of that torture, you know, it's fucking hell. Yeah. And, you know, well, you some, sometimes when that happens, you're in Europe or yeah. you're in Japan. And you're like, well, we can't Eat just some fuck, bad food. We can't just go home, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, yes, you can. <laughs> Wow. Well, yeah, like they say, you know, it's uh, it's not the hour on stage, but that other 24 or 22 and a half. Yeah, that yeah. You got to deal with the person, you know, and yeah. obviously he's a real pro off stage. Yes. So I, I you know, that's just been yeah. wonderful, you know. And, and you can change your guitar, bass or drum head, but the voice, if the voice isn't on, the show is going to lack. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. You know, when we got back together with Janie in 2008, it was, I mean, honestly, it wasn't good. It was like, yikes, you know, it just didn't, you know. And it's funny because nobody gave a shit when we got back together. You know, everybody only cares when someone dies. It's like, oh, now he's the greatest. He did this. You know, I was like, well, where, where have you people been for the last 15 years, you know? Right. You should have come supported him and us. And, and it was just, it's a weird, yeah, it was a weird situation, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, with the... The band all back together, obviously, all the original members and, and Robert and making this new record. You got Frontiers behind you. You know, obviously, there's a lot of these festivals out there with the Rocklahomas and the M3s and people really celebrating this classic era that you guys came from. But, you know, you're a contemporary band. This is new music. This is a hot new record, you know. So how does it feel to be able to kind of bridge that gap by giving the people the classics, but at the same time not being that retro being only playing yeah, the oldies. I think that was like, you know, Eric and I are very driven, as you can tell. We, we just never, you know, we never relied on those first two records. You know, we did a record with Jamie St. James, yeah. and then we did Rockaholic, and then now we did this. So, you know, we never wanted to just sit back and, and you know, milk the cow, you know, until mm -hmm. it dries up. We're just mm -hmm. not, we like to keep things fresh. It's good for us just as much as it is, is for the fans mm -hmm. to have new music. So uh, that that's, you know, it's cool. It's cool when you get far enough, enough along where you're like, oh, well, we can play this from Rock and Hall. Yeah, you know, and you get, a lot of choices. Yeah, now you're like, oh, we've got like 22 new songs that we've all created, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And nine years with Robert, and it starts to feel good again, you know. That's beautiful. Now, all that you've seen and gone through, what advice do you have to the youngsters? Obviously, the business is constantly changing, but as far as the, you know, the realness of what it takes to be a band and write songs and put on a great show night after night, what advice do you kind of school the youngsters on? I think you know what I've learned is you just you've got to let each member of the band be themselves. You you you're not the boss of your band. You know whether you might think you are, but, but that just doesn't. You know, I think why we get along and why, we, you know, we let, we let whoever wants to do everything, do everything. And the guy that doesn't want to do anything, you know, we don't, we just like, doing nothing's good sometimes, you know? Yeah. That's cool. And we're all different and, you know, we don't have, we don't try and change each other to fit something, you know? So that, I think, just, you know, finding the right guys and the chemistry, that's the hardest thing. It's a marriage, you know? It's a really, it's a financial thing. Yeah, you've got documents, you've got legal papers. You, yeah, so it's, you know, when it goes south, it sucks. But, yeah. uh, you know, just try not to micromanage. Because you'd be surprised if, you know, we were always micromanaged with Lane and told, you know, you can't write, you can't, you can't. After a while, it's just you get beat down, and then now with where we're at, it's like you know we can. I always wanted to. Fuck you. I we're, you know, that's not the way to treat somebody. It's not the way to get the best out of a band. You sure. know, you you all just let everybody do their thing. You know, and then pray pray f to God a lot because <laughs> you're gonna need it. <laughs> Well, Jerry, it's always a pleasure. Congratulations on the move to Vegas, the hot new album, and, and being, you know, one of the hometown boys from here that went out and did something, you know, gave, gave the world some excitement. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks for having me. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be, uh, we, could, we could smell Van Halen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool.